I have to ask you, sir, let's talk right off the bat about how you got involved in the world of NFTs. There was suddenly huge interest in, in my community of uh, comic strip artists about the potential of NFTs in, in reaching collectors of, of our art. And um, so, you know, we quickly tried to educate ourselves as to, as to what NFTs were all about and where we might fit in. Uh, I, I have a, a, a fairly long relationship with Heritage Auctions, um, both as a buyer and a seller, um, that um, uh, created an environment of, uh, of mutual trust, I think, that, that, you know, that we, we had the same goals. We didn't want to get into this unless we could proceed responsibly. And um, that's what uh, uh, I, I believe we're doing. But at what point did you realize that this was going to be something that you wanted to do, not simply for your own benefit, but for the benefit of, here we are, obviously, I believe this is for Ukrainian relief. So certainly well, there had Well, you're been right. The, this, the, the developments in the technology coincided, um, those improvements coincided with, with the beginning of the war uh, in Ukraine. So it presented us with a unique opportunity to uh, raise funds to aid uh, internally displaced refugees uh, with a project that would be environmentally responsible. So, so it's serendipity that uh, not only um, could could this project um, proceed uh, in an environmentally friendly way, but uh, we could we could use this first offering um, in in, a, in a, to cr to create funds for for organizations that desperately need it. For this particular project, you chose the strips that you chose for the for the Washington Post 50th anniversary collection, among the other 17 items in this NFT collection. And I want to go back to that decision as you began to pare down those 10 particular strips. And obviously there are descriptions with each one and explanations for the backstory behind each particular strip. But I cannot imagine after having gone through 40 years of Doonesbury, that it was at all a simple task to try to under, to try to distill what you were saying, what you accomplished, and what you have really generated in terms of an ongoing, extraordinary narrative to these ten strips. So, how did that process take place? Well, there were there were ones that didn't require a great deal of thought, like guilty, guilty, <laughs> guilty. Ones that simply um, were high impact and were written about, and it, uh, to some degree were were controversial. That was one that the Washington Post famously uh, edited out. I don't think that strip would cause a ripple today because everybody <laughs> says out loud whatever they feel like online. Uh, there, there, there are no there's, there are no filters, no barriers anymore. But at the time, that was considered prejudgment, albeit the prejudgment of a fictional character. <laughs> and that all by itself was, was considered unacceptable to certain editors at the time. But, but others of, the, of, the, of what we're calling the classic strips um, simply were ones that um, over time I came to see that people really appreciated. They, they would come up in conversation or book signings. Um, and then in addition, I just ones I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of. Uh, that I think were the most original or kind of groundbreaking for the characters um, and that, that, that pushed the envelope a little. So it, it was a very subjective process. I could come up with several more collections of 10, um, but um, I, I thought that was a representative group. But you and I are surrounded by characters for a reason, uh, which is that those characters um, were the meat and potatoes of the strip and they're why people care about the strip. Um, to the degree they do, um, it's because they they identify with certain characters, and it is astonishing to me that, that decades later people will say, "I remember that strip." Well, how could they have remembered a strip that took them ten seconds to read thirty years earlier? That that astonishes me. But if if it if it triggers something in a in a, in a person um, and has some particular meaning in their life, it sticks. I just imagine that when these characters, these 73 characters, become such an extraordinarily significant part of your life. Certainly at some point, I assume they began as um, just different iterations of you and the things you wanted to say. But as with any character, they take on lives of their own. I, I, get, I guess I, you know, I was, wasn't looking that, that far over the horizon um, to think about my relationship to the characters. First of all, 
it is only a professional one. I never think about them when I'm not writing the strip. Um, you know, they have to be uh, summoned to work. And then I'll cast whatever my, you know, whatever my theme of the week is, I'll, I'll find the right characters that work for that or create new ones if necessary. Right. <laughs> and uh, I think the thing that I've taken the most delight in is, is, in, is in creating successive generations. Um, the characters I'm most interested in, like, like Alex and Toggle and, and some of, some of the, uh, the Gen X characters and millennials, um, is that they're still in the act of, of, of becoming. They're still emerging. And it's when um, people are at their most dynamic in their late teens and their, their mid-20s. And that's just inherently more interesting because you can take them in any direction at that point. Um, you know, I saw with my own kids. They're very comfortable with switchbacks in their careers. And, and as they move through life, they're going in all kinds of, 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 of uh, directions you wouldn't expect them to. And I've tried to let my characters sort of reflect that um, in their own journeys. When younger readers who might not necessarily be as versed in it as those of us who have been reading it for all, all of our lives, talk to you about it and ask you what it's about and try to find some way into it. What do you say to them? Well, it, it, it depends on what level you want, to, you, you want to enter the strip. I mean, it's like opening up a Russian novel, right, in the middle. Right. Um, there's there's this, this huge number of characters. But what I've done in the last seven years or so, ever since I stepped away from the Daily Strip, is I've tried to make them pretty self-contained. That, In other words, you don't really need to know a lot about, about the characters and their backstory in order to... Um, uh, to you know, to get the sense of 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 of, the, of what I'm trying to do in in, in any given strip um, during the day during the week we run what what we uh, laughingly call Doonesbury classics. Um, yeah. They're basically reruns, but they are curated, and I'm only picking ones that will be intelligible to a new audience that you don't need to know a lot of backstory. I take out all the ephemeral aspects. I take out the politics for the most part. Um, and, 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 you know, particularly, particularly uh, specific uh, references to a point in time and just try to let the characters be themselves and then hope that over time a new reader will pick up on, on uh, who those characters are. Uh, there's not much I can do to engineer you know, new entry points for, 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 for new readers. Um, and also to be, to be, to be frank about it, um, uh, I, I don't have any huge expectations that I'm gaining new readers at this, at this late date. Uh, I, I hope I do. Um, but, um, you know, it's, 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 uh, it was kind of the job description to begin with just to kind of track this, this, this particular, this huge generation I was born into and explore, explore what their lives are like as they move through time. Um, and uh, I, I've always assumed that, that, it, that the strip will mostly appeal uh, to that original target audience.